Well, hello, Internet, and welcome to part three of my PHP message board tutorial. If you didn't watch part one or two, definitely watch them. Otherwise, you will be confused. What I've got right here is the registration form for my message board, and we started this in the previous tutorial, part two, and here we're going to finish it. Whenever this is done, people are going to be able to come in here, enter all this information. Everything's going to be checked, and all the information is going to be scrubbed to make sure that nothing bad is entered in any of these fields. And then everything will be placed in a MySQL database that we created in part one of this tutorial. You can see here user ID is one and there's username, there's an encrypted password, there's email, token ID, we'll get more into that a little bit later. That's in regards to cookies and sessions. First name, last name, and here active is set for null. Well, I was actually asked by somebody how to delete all the information in a table and set it back to the way it was before any user's information was entered in. What you do is you actually type in truncate table users and if you click that in there and then try to show the table nothing shows up and the user ID is automatically set back to one whenever you enter a new user and just to show you here the table still exists as you can see right here however it's been completely cleaned of any information and restored to its original default settings so what I'm going to do now is jump in and show you all the code that we're going to need to finish up our registration script all right from the last tutorial down here in the field I have highlighted, you can see that this is a hidden variable and its name is set for submitted and then the value is set for true. The reason why we did that, you're gonna see here right now. I'm gonna scroll up and go to the main div inside of this guy and I'm gonna start writing some code. The very first thing I'm gonna do, and this code is going to be called if the submit button is hit. And what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna check all of the variables that were submitted in the post array and see if submitted has a value of true. Remember down here, value true. That means they submitted the information. So that's what I'm doing here with this line of code. If they did indeed submit information, I need to verify that it is good information. So what I'm gonna do first off is check that first name is valid. And how I'm gonna check that it is valid or contains valid information is with a regular expression. And you wanna check that information entered. You call a function called pregmatch and then you put a regular expression inside of it. And if you haven't seen my regular expression tutorial, definitely check that out. I provide a link to it. And what we're going to do is we're going to say, all right, the information that they entered in the first name field is going to start off, and that's what the caret stands for, the beginning of the string. And it's going to contain a dash, an underscore potentially. I don't know who would put an underscore, but just doing that just to show you different things. Then it's going to have either lowercase letters or uppercase letters or a space. And it's going to be a minimum of two characters in length to a maximum of 20 characters in length. And then it will end. It will not allow anything else that is not defined inside of here to be used in the first name field. Then I'm going to strip out any potential slashes. This is in regards to something called magic quotes. You don't really need to worry about it. What it basically does is if the string contains any slashes, it's going to get rid of them. So that's what it does. And what trim does is it gets rid of any white space. And there's first name. And we're going to close that off. All right. So if this does match, we're going to define a new variable called fn and we're going to pass all the data contained in this guy to the function that we created previously called escape data and it's going to scrub all of that data to make sure nothing bad came inside of there. Now you don't necessarily have to do it because the regular expression is going to clean up pretty much everything but what the heck it's always better to err on the side of caution. And then what we're going to do if bad information was entered we're going to set fn first name to false and we're going to echo out the screen a message. A lot of you are probably wondering why I'm not using jQuery here or JavaScript to automatically verify all this information. The reason why is I'm just basically not going to trust JavaScript to be able to handle all of that and make sure that everything is passed securely because it is very easy to hack JavaScript. If you don't believe that, check out my PHP security tutorial or just trust that that's true. And here I'm putting in some CSS code, which I really shouldn't do here. I should have this in a separate file, but trying to keep everything unwieldy. So just so you know why I am using font and so forth, it's to keep my code small. I'm gonna close that off, and then I'm gonna check if a valid last name was entered. And it's pretty much gonna be exactly the same. Just gonna change a couple things here. I'm gonna allow the same type of information to be entered in here, except I'm gonna take up to 30 in length for last names. And then this is gonna to have to be changed to last name. 
and this is going to have to be changed to LN, and this is going to be changed to LN, and then this needs to be changed to last instead of first, and then everything else is perfectly fine. We're going to allow all this other information to get rid of this as well. All right, there you go. So now we're checking to make sure that a valid last name was entered, and I'm going to continue because I love the copy and paste. I'm going to come in here and verify the email address. So I'm going to type in email. Now, of course, the regular expression for this is completely different, but a lot of this is going to be the same. I'm going to delete that out of there, and I'm going to say for the email address, I'm going to accept capital letters, lowercase letters, zero through nine, and then I'm going to accept periods, underscores, backslash, this percent sign because I use it as a delimiter, and then that's it. So I'm going to accept any of those characters right there, one or more, followed by an at symbol, followed by uppercase. Actually, you know what I'm going to do? I'm going to copy this, copy, paste inside of there. So I'm going to accept all those same characters, and then the plus sign stands for one or more, and then I have to backslash the dot, and then I'm going to have uppercase letters, lowercase letters, close that off, and this is going to be for the .com, .net, .whatever. And I'm going to say I want two to four characters in length right there. And that's it. That's how you verify an email address. Now what I got to do, I have to come in here and go email, email, change FN to E, and then do it again. Please enter a valid email. Get rid of that. And then everything else afterwards is all hunky-dory. So now I need to verify that they entered a valid username. And I'm going to jump up here to the last name area and copy that and paste that in. Is, is username is valid? Here we got it. Okay, so now I got to come in here and make sure that the username that they entered is valid. And this is going to be a little bit fancy here also. Just to show you something different, this is another way you can define the beginning of a string with a backslash uppercase A. And you can also define the end with a backslash a Z. So this is to a certain extent a regular expression tutorial, but you should definitely understand regular expressions because I can't totally devote a lot of time to that. Now what I want to do here is I'm going to say to them that I need this to be a minimum of eight characters characters in length. Actually, it should be longer than that. Actually, I'm going to change it to 12 right now. I'm going to say their password must be 12 in length. Then I'm going to say I want it to contain at least one uppercase letter, at least one lowercase letter, and at least one number and no spaces. Okay, so that's what the username is going to be. How you do that, put the question mark inside of here, and I'm going to say that I'm going to accept the username to have dash, underscore, A through Z, lowercase, A through Z, uppercase, 0 through 9 in numbers. And then to enforce the fact that one of these is going to have to be an uppercase letter, the star represents any number of characters. And then I'm going to put a question mark and I'm going to say in here A through Z uppercase letters. So in essence what this says is we will accept any of these characters right here in your username as long as you have at least one uppercase letter A through Z. So that's what that says right there. So then what are we going to do? We're also going to require that they also put a lowercase letter in there. Shouldn't be a problem. So I just copied and pasted that in there and I'm just going to change this to A through Z, lowercase letters. And then I'm going to paste in here again and I'm going to say that I want at least one number to be inside of here. So that's super. And then on top of that, if I do not want it to contain any spaces, I go backslash capital S. That's what that represents in regular expressions and then 12 characters minimum and they can make their username as long as they possibly could want to. So that's how we're going to come in here and make sure that they entered a valid username. So then I come in here into the post section and I have to type in user ID which is the name that I gave it. You can make it whatever you want and I'm going to type in UI here and UI here. Please enter a valid. I'm going to type in username or just like that and then come in here and change that to user ID. So this is going to verify and make sure that all the right information was entered inside of there. And now I need to verify that they entered a proper password. And I'm actually going to copy this guy this time. The username is password. And I'm actually going to take in two of their passwords, as you can remember from the previous tutorial. If not, here it is. See, password and confirm password. So that's what that is. So I'm going to actually get two of these guys. So I need to verify both of them. So what am I going to do? Well, the password, this code, the regular expression I use to verify that everything's been entered right. I'm going to leave that exactly the same, except I'm going to come in here and type in password one, and then I'm going to come in here and type password one, and I'm also going to verify that both of the passwords they entered are equal to each other. So I'm going to come in here and say if underscore POST password one is equal to underscore POST password two, and 
I'm also going to verify that the password they entered is not equal to their user ID. A lot of people do that, believe it or not. Is not equal to user ID. Then I'm going to escape out the password, change this to P, and then I'm going to put in here else if P underscore POST password one is equal to underscore POST, and then type in here user ID. In that situation, I'm going to set the password variable name P to false, and I'm going to come in here. I'm going to give them an error message saying you can't do that, else, tab that in there. I'm going to copy this. Well, I know if they got this error message and the user ID is not equal to the password, that means the two passwords are incorrect. So I have to set P to false again. Your password doesn't match. And all this code is at newthinktank.com for free, of course. I'm going to close off this guy right there. All right, now we're getting into the CAPTCHA area. So let's just go PHP, CAPTCHA. I normally put a lot better comments, but I'm just trying to make this quick. All right, so this is the CAPTCHA code you're going to be entering is equal to one and then private key that you get from Google. And then, like I said before, it's going to be like six, blah, 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 whatever yours is, right like that. And then you're going to type in RESP. In the next tutorial or one very soon afterwards, I'm going to show you how to create a CAPTCHA system that is not gigantic on your screen, because I did get that request also. Private key, which is what you just entered. And then you're going to enter server. And you're going to enter exactly what I have here. This is Google's rules for its CAPTCHA system. So just put that inside of there. If at any time I'm typing something in, I'm not going into descriptions on why it works or why I'm doing it, that means it's just something you don't really need to worry about. You can just copy and paste it. And I continue on. What this is doing is verifying if the information they entered into the CAPTCHA system is correct. And you would enter it in exactly as I have here on the screen. Then what we got to do is what are we going to do whenever this is entered in correctly? And this is actually me. Font color is equal to red. This is the error message I want to show up. Whatever, you can say as much as you want there. And then this is me again, checking that the capture came back as a positive, that they entered the information properly. So that's me. Now where I was setting this and where I was setting this to false and doing all these things, this is where you're gonna see exactly why I was doing that. I'm gonna verify that every single one of those came back with a true result. So I'm gonna go in first name and last name and email address and password and UI and that's user ID and this guy that's right here that I'll just copy and paste since he's just hanging there. Okay, so I'm just verifying that every single one of those came back with a true answer. And if it did, I'm going to create a query for MySQL. And if it's an uppercase letters, that means it's a command. If it's not, that means it's not. So I'm saying here I want to select usernames from the table called users where the username is equal to the value that they pass that they want to use for the user name. And what I'm doing here is I'm checking to see if that user ID is already taken. So the result of this query is going to be stored in result and you pass all of your queries to MySQL using MySQL query. And here I'm going to put the query that I just created or if it's already being used, I'm going to trigger an error that's going to print to screen. And then I'm going to close that off, right like that. But if that account is available, what I want to do here is check that it is. So what we're doing is we're checking the result to make sure that it's equal to zero. That means that user ID is not currently in the database. That's why it came back zero or false or whatever you want to think of it as. Zero is equal to false. So if the user ID isn't taken, what I want to do is create an activation code. What we're going to do is after they type in all this stuff and register, I'm going to send them an email that's going to have a link inside of it and they're going to have to click on it to activate their account. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to create a random number that's going to be 32 digits in length. And ND5 is just a function that creates a random string, 32 characters in length. And unique ID also creates a random number of 23 digits in length. And RAND also creates random numbers. So that's what that guy's going to do right there. It's going to create a random number that's going to be used to activate the account. Then I'm actually going to have to come in here and do another query in MySQL. And remember, if it's uppercase, that means it's a command in MySQL. And if it's lowercase, that means, in this case, users is a table. First, name, last, underscore name. And here I'm defining all the variable names inside of the database. 
So this is what they're called, and then I'm gonna pass a value to them. Active is where I'm gonna store the verification code and username is the last one that I got inside of there. Close that off. This is how you pass values in MySQL. First name, last name, email. I'm going to call the SHA function. What this is going to do is it's going to encrypt the password that they gave to me before it gets sent live to my server. So I actually never even know the password. I think that's a good idea. Where I could get them a new password, of course. Okay, by using MySQL query, what I'm also doing is I'm making sure that they don't pass more than one query to be issued, so that's another security sort of thing that I'm going to do here. My SQL, we saw this just a second ago. Actually, let's just copy this and paste it in there. Except I'm gonna change this. I'm just gonna say, sorry, an error occurred. Then what I wanna do here is for security reasons again, I'm going to verify that the last query only affected one row. If I'm creating one new user account, there's no reason for it to affect more than one row. And if it did affect more than one row, I know I got a problem. All right, now what I'm going to do is I'm going to create a variable called body, and this is going to contain the text that I'm going to then send to them in email. And then close that off and scroll up. Now what I'm going to do is add on to the body section here and create the link that they're going to be clicking on to activate their account. And here I'm putting localhost, which you would never do. It's going to be whatever you call it. This is message board activate. And I'm going to create that in the next tutorial, .php. And here, just to keep it simple, I want to call this X. And then here, I'm going to call my SQL insert ID. And what this does is it retrieves the value of the last auto incremented ID in your last query that you perform. So it's automatically going to give you that user ID that you just created. And we're going to set Y equal to the random number that we generated earlier in this part of the tutorial. And then I'm going to call mail underscore POST, and it's gonna be whatever their email address was that they entered. So this is where your email is gonna to go to, and this is gonna be your subject. And then in the next part, you're gonna put body, which is what's gonna show up in the body section of your email. Actually, I don't need these quotes. From, obviously this is from me. And then I'm gonna echo out the screen, put a break statement inside of there, and then blah, 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 blah. And I'm gonna close that off with an H3 tag. Right like that, I'm gonna call exit, which is gonna exit the script all together. And then I have to close this off in case an error occurred. And let's just jump up here to make our lives a little bit easier. And let's just copy this one. And this is just gonna be an error message that pops up. Sorry, something broke. Uh, obviously you wouldn't wanna type that in, but that's just something I'm gonna type in here just to move things along. And then we gotta close off these other guys. And if you have the code in front of you, I'm sure you see where I'm closing off these curly braces. Copy, paste it again. And then you're gonna to continue to close off the rest of these curly braces. And like I said, go get the code. It'll save you some time. And then here I'm gonna call MySQL close and close the whole database. And then put the final curly brace inside of there and then close off the PHP code. So that's the whole shebang right there. There's a link in the underbar to the code. And just to prove to you that this whole thing works, let's just come in here and go. And I'm not gonna enter in wrong stuff. I'm actually gonna put some. You just have to trust me that the error messages work. And then say it's working. Typed in the captcha. Clicked on register, everything worked beautifully. Isn't that awesome? And then if we jump over here, Boink, you can see that it created the account. So that's everything for now. In the next part of the tutorial, I'm gonna create the activation part of this whole message board shebang. And if you have any questions or comments, leave them in the comment section below. Otherwise, till next time.